Hey you, this is Drew. As we come to a close with the finale of X-Men 97, today we will be covering Jean Grey, who is the fifth member of the original X-Men as Marvel Girl. She has telepathic and telekinetic powers, but her powers first manifested as a child due to the stress of the death of her best friend. Before joining his school, Xavier helped Jean by putting psychic blocks on her telepathy and helped in training her telekinesis. He showed her how to use Cerebro and with it, locate Cyclops as his first X-Men. At the school, the team fought many battles against Magneto and his brotherhood and several other threats. One day, Hank McCoy from the future came to their present day asking the original X-Men for their help in saving his life and stopping Cyclops who had gone nuts, which I'll leave a link to both of their videos below so you can see more into the detail. But in that future, Jean Grey was dead and Xavier's school was named after her. In this future, the mental blocks put by Xavier were deactivated in young Jean's mind since he was not there. While still in the future, the Shi'ar Empire tried to have Jean Grey on trial for what the Phoenix did while in the body of her older self, which we'll get to that here in a bit. Her team came to her rescue with the Guardians of the Galaxy as well as the Star Jammers, and with her new powers that she had unleashed in this new time zone, she overcame Gladiator. Speaking of Gladiator, I saw someone mentioned in one of my recent videos asking me to cover him, which I'll probably do sometime soon. During the Impox Crisis, the team decided to go their own ways, and Jean was asked by Storm to join her team. After struggling to go back to their own time and Beast failing, they decided that they could just stay in the future. It didn't work out as planned since the time stream was collapsing. As they traveled through time, just basically jumping from time zone to time zone, a younger version of Cable helped them in returning to their original time and forgetting all about what they saw in the future. After graduating Professor X's school, she was still a part-time X-Men but continued her education at Metro College. She eventually came back to the school and her and Cyclops began dating. Jean and the X-Men were captured by the island of Krakoa, leading to Xavier forming a new team of X-Men to save them. All of the original team members all left the team except for Cyclops, but since they were still dating, this kept her in contact with the team. Storm and Jean became friends and Wolverine developed feelings for her. Jean, Xavier, and a few others had been captured and transported to space. After defeating their captor, they escaped in a shuttle, and while on their way back to Earth, they encountered some deadly solar flares. As Jean was guiding the ship back to Earth, it was pretty much obvious that she was going to die. But you know what happened? She did! Because the Phoenix Force saved her by coming to her rescue. The Phoenix replicated Jean with part of her consciousness and continued her life as she was placed in a cocoon to heal from the injuries caused by the accident. The Phoenix did a lot while impersonating Jean. It saved the universe by mending the Mukran crystal. Don't quote me on that. I I think I, I hope I said it right. It also blocked out Cyclops' optic glass and let him see without using his visor, and it even told Jean's parents that she was a mutant. Now this is the part I was telling you about earlier. Mastermind and the Hellfire Club corrupted the Phoenix, causing it to transform into the Dark Phoenix, in which it took off into space and destroyed an entire solar system with over 5 billion living creatures. Man! Yeah. But she came back to Earth threatening everyone. Luckily, Xavier was able to control her. The Shi'ar teleported the team to them after seeing what Jean had done, planning on killing her. In this situation, the Phoenix became the Dark Phoenix again, sacrificing itself on the moon since it knew it could not control itself. After its death, the part of Jean that had bonded with the Phoenix ended up in the White Hot Room until she was told to continue to learn and grow. The Phoenix tried to give that part back to her in the cocoon, but she rejected it and the Phoenix as she was still traumatized by what the Dark Phoenix had done. That part that had been rejected by Jean wandered the earth until it came across one of Mr. Sinister's clones, Madeline Pryor, and gave her some of Jean's memories, and she married Cyclops. Later on, the cocoon where Jean was in was discovered, and she was found alive, but couldn't remember much about the Phoenix, nor control her telekinesis. When Scott found out that Jean was alive, he left his wife and son. Man. Not necessarily father of the year. <laughs> JK. But when Jean found out that the X-Men were working with Magneto and there was a lot of anti-mutant hate going on politically, the original five X-Men formed X-Factor. They posed as humans that were hunting mutants but in actuality were giving them protection. At one point in time, Scott's mind was playing tricks on him and he thought Jean, Madeline, and the Phoenix were the same person, which he almost killed Jean. One day Scott saw on TV part of the team alongside Madeline die, and her last words were for him to find their son. Jean eventually took on the personalities of the Phoenix and Madeline prior, which caused her to be exhausted. Scott proposed to her, but Jean turned him down, just to make sure that it wasn't anyone manipulating him. When the Shadow King attacked X-Factor, the team teamed up with the X-Men and rejoined the team, with Jean joining Storm's gold team. At this point, Jean stopped going by Marvel Girl and started being called by her name, Jean Grey. After some time, Jean proposed to Scott and the two were happily married. During the Onslaught event, which, man, that was a little bit crazy, especially for Jean. But basically what happened was she found out from Onslaught that Professor Xavier had had a crush on her, and the Juggernaut came seeking help. And the dude was terrified. Which, if you've seen the Juggernaut, it would seem like nothing could scare him, but Onslaught did. So, yeah, that's pretty scary. So, Jean is trying to remove some mental blocks in Juggernaut's head to try and find out who Onslaught actually is. And it's none other than Charles Xavier. Man, what? But Xavier had tried to wipe Magneto's mind, but in the process, he actually, the two merged and became Onslaught. After this event, Xavier was arrested and Scott and Jean became co-headmasters of the school, leading the X-Men. After some time, Scott and Jean took some time away from the team to get a little rest. 
Jean returned to the school, Scott was possessed by Apocalypse for a period of time, and Professor Xavier was possessed by his evil twin sister, Cassandra Nova, who added him as a mutant. Xavier slash Nova left the team, leaving Jean as the leader of the school. After ridding himself of Apocalypse, Cyclops came back to the school, but this time with a darker, serious attitude. With Scott being different in many ways, including in his relationship with Jean, Jean kissed Wolverine, but Wolverine stopped her, letting her know that it wouldn't work out. Scott eventually sought out therapy from Emma Frost, but Emma tried to use him and tried to have a telepathic affair with him. Although nothing physical ever happened, Scott was still mad at himself for what did happen and let Jean know and he left the team. Fast forward some time, Zorn tricked Jean and her and Wolverine ended up on an asteroid M as it was drifting toward the sun. Wolverine couldn't stand to watch her suffer so he tried to kill her, awakening the phoenix in the process. The phoenix then brought Jean and Wolverine back to New York which Zorn killed her with an electromagnetic pulse. Scott apologized for all the pain he caused her but she told him to keep living and gave him her blessing to be with Emma. The phoenix resurrected Jean and became the dark phoenix to which Logan was aware and attempted to kill it to which the phoenix kept repeating the resurrection process. Logan kept on over and over until he was finally successful and Jean was resurrected as regular normal good old Jean. Jean froze her body with cryokinesis to stop the phoenix from possessing her anymore. Jean was identified as dead inside the ice and the phoenix used Scott's optic blast to create a manifestation of a look like Jean. Cyclops then used his optic blast enough to melt the ice where Jean's body was and she came to life shouting ENOUGH knocking down the phoenix. The phoenix was confused as to how she was able to do that without it to which she responded saying I am you! Don't you remember? Jean and Phoenix talked it over and realized that the Phoenix's empty feeling was because of Jean's feelings of wanting to be loved by Scott. They joined together because the Phoenix realized it needed Jean and the two became the Dark Phoenix again. Scott had Emma and the Stepford Cuckoos finding the X-Men and anyone who has ever loved Jean to send their emotions to her via telepathy, trying to satisfy the hunger for being loved. Of course, the Shi'ar show up and destroy everyone. Luckily, Jean had become the White Phoenix of the Crown and used her powers to alter reality and put everything back to normal before the Shi'ar's destruction. Jean began searching in the white hot room for the remaining fragments of the Phoenix. After some time passed, guess what the Phoenix did? The same thing is done a thousand times before. <laughs> Resurrected Jean. But this time, it kept her in a pocket reality, to which she sent science to the X-Men as cries for help. While in New Mexico, they were able to open a portal and come to her rescue, to which with Wolverine's help, overcame the Phoenix. After some time, Jean came to live on Krakoa where mutants began to create a sovereign nation. The nation was attacked by Orcus and killed several of the mutants including Jean. The Five, who was a group of individuals in Krakoa, had the ability to resurrect people's minds and put them in new bodies that they had made in Krakoa. So that's what they did with Jean. Jean was asked to join the summer section of the Quiet Council. Her and Emma overcame their bitterness between each other over some drinks. But that's about it. Thank you all for checking out this video. Leave a comment below and like and follow for more. Thanks!